This, today I will be presenting a part of my research, not all my research. This part is like the beginning. I have done this two years ago. Uh, the full title of my research is Homogenization of Rabli Composite Layer in Large Deformation for Iterative Decomposite Method. Uh, in our life, like, where is she? God, okay. So in our life, we scramble upon composite material everywhere, in like tires, hearts, and stuff. The most tricky stuff about this material is that we don't know how to characterize it. And uh, like the, for most of material, we have like energy, simple energy. We categorize it by like Jung modulus, Poisson coefficient, uh, coefficient of flame, etc. Our composite material are very delicate. So my purpose is there is many methods to characterize it, but my purpose is to simplify the complex method existing in the scientific field. So the problematic is that the method of the technique of homogenization is useful for comprehending and designing the physical behavior. This method, the existing methods in for now, is expensive for commercial use, particularly for uh, non-material uh, behavior, uh, for non-linear material behavior. My goal is to propose and introduce a new approach to improve the current homogenization model that exists of a fibrous layer through numerical approaches in order to better predict their behavior at high uh, or large deformations with low costs. First of all, I've been introducing one of the methods of the homogeneous method existing in the, in the field, like the coupling method. Then I will, you will discover with me the new methods, which is the coupling method, with an example. And we will see the local errors of this method that give this method. And then we will generalize it on a full layer, a fibered layer, and we will see examples of this one. First of all, uh, for non-linear, in order to uh, like in order in order to solve a non-linear homogenization problem for uh, composite material in large deformation, uh, the classical literature sends us directly to uh, micro-macro couplet methods uh, in the non-linear framework. Uh, in, uh, in the nonlinear framework, the method uh, that's presented over here is called uh, the square uh, finite element, uh, which consists in uh, solving uh, the microscopic, uh, microscopic problems uh, in each increment, as shown in these figures. Though, so the the principle of this method is uh, we have to solve a large number of microscopic problems, which we call BVP, boundary value problems, in, uh, everywhere in the domain, in our large structure. Each uh, Gaussian point, uh, which really this method requires a very high computational like cost and time. And in order to reduce this uh, time. Uh, we introduce here the deco decoupled homogenization method, which consists in uh, uh, solving each boundary value problem, the microscopic and macroscopic, separately. So this method uh, is based on three steps. The first one consists on selecting uh, hyper elastic, uh, elastic, hyper elastic microscopic and isotropic behavior model, which is our homogenized, homogenized potential, which we have two large family, uh, family. The first one, the first type of uh, potentials are linear uh, potential uh, respecting the coefficients, uh, which we have two types. The first two models, the first one are volumetric and isochoric model. 
for example, new hook and Kalisk more potentials. The second, uh, the second model are, uh, uh, is uh, the isotropic and transversal uh, model, like uh, Bonnet potential. Uh, the both models are written on the function of the summation of pK, which are uh, the coefficient of the material, uh, multiplied by w, uh, w, WK in uh, terms of potential. And uh, the second big family is the, of the potentials existing, uh, the nonlinear potential. Uh, in respecting of the coefficients like Holzafeld potential. I said nonlinear potential because in the exponential we find Q2, which is the coefficient that we are searching for. So, we move to the step two. The second step is to conduct a numerical test on a representative heterogeneous elementary volume, which we call which uh, we find the matrix and the, fiber, uh, the fibers uh, approximated by finite elements. Here, the first step in this, like the first uh, sub-step in this step, is to choose randomly a set of macroscopic deformation, which we call here uh, H-tilde, and, uh, and the number of tests to perform. Uh, in types and intensity. In this table, I present the different H that we can have, uh, the different deformation. Like we have two big families. The first, uh, the first, uh, f uh, the first uh, deformations are simple ones like tension, uh, compression, uh, and uh, shear. And the second uh, family are the mixed deformation, which we can combine both uh, the case one, uh, two, and three with uh, case four, five, six, which means uh, we can combine the simple, uh, the unidirectional uh, traction or compression with the shear to have another type of uh, deformations. Second, uh, when collecting this uh, list of H uh, tilde, we can now compute the second macroscopic pure Laker shelf uh, stress tensor, which we called here S tilde, by integration of the heterogeneous uh, representative elementary volume after solving the corresponding boundary volume. In our case, we will always use the periodic boundary conditions in order to simplify everything and to have everything easy going. So here I am one of the best measures that we had found that gives the best uh, results so far. And the last step of our decoupled homogenization, it's uh, called, it's like consists uh, uh, at um, uh, uh, the identification, the macroscopic identification of the co uh, coefficients of the chosen potential, which is our goal, really the goal of this whole method is to identify the coefficients of the chosen potential. First of all, we will ex express the second stress tensor of pure uh, of the macroscopic pure Kirchhoff as a function of the chosen homogenized potential and the, pot and the coefficients which we already uh, introduced. Uh, in the case of a linear potential uh, with uh, respect to its coefficients, we can write it as the summation of the coefficients pk uh, multiplied by uh, gk, which is the, deriv uh, the derivative of the different terms uh, of the potential. So this one is the homogenized second pure Kirchhoff, which is the last material that we need to have. After, like, uh, after uh, calculating uh, the second homogenized pure Kirchhoff, now we'll use it to identify the macroscopic coefficients using a least square optimization method. Uh, we, need only, we only need to minimize this uh, uh, equation, which is uh, xi, and the w is very important. Uh, in the end, I will talk about it. The w is called the weight which is, uh, in the process, will give an importance to each uh, test we use. Like, if you want to, to give an importance to the shear method, we'll give a high number for W, etc. Uh, 
we have like many options for the uh, optimization algorithm. Like we have the sequential least square quadratic programming. We have the linear resolution. In our case, we have we use the first uh, optimization algorithm, which is SLSQP, with uh, positive uh, conditions in order to guard the polyconvexity of our method. As an example, for this decoupled method, we'll give an incompressible case with uh, the Neokian uh, potential. The first uh, equation, which WNH, is uh, the, Neokian comp uh, the classical Neokian potential that we know in the literature, uh, given to the matrix and the fiber. And the second one is the theoretical homogenized potential, which we are given by Debutant in 2013. The two coefficients that we are trying to, uh, to identify are called Mutual and Mubar, which he gave the exact solution using an analytical equations. Uh, their expression are written by the lame coefficients uh, with the characteristics of fibers and matrix. Using those two potentials, we can identify our two uh, coefficients uh, uh, Mutilde and Mubar. Uh, the first one is like we have uh, here we have uh, like introduced two cases. The first one uh, we in low incompressibility, uh, which means in uh, the case of uh, 0.49. Uh, the numerical solution, up, uh, which is the curve, uh, the blue uh, plot. Uh, uh, approximated by finite elements is different from the analytical one presented by Debouton, which is the red one, uh, for both uh, for the both coefficients. And this uh, these differences are clearly seen in the second coefficient, which is mu bar. And in uh, by increasing the incompressibility, that means by by passing from quasi incompressible. Uh, 0 0.49 to uh, like almost incompressible uh, case uh, 0 0.4999. Here we uh, see that the both of the solution came close. So this result, this uh, the end, uh, the last results. Uh, prove that our decoupled method really works to have a good, uh, a good identification of the coefficients. Now we pass to see the local error of our methods, which consists in uh, the the local error is uh, between the second pure like the homogeneous the homogene homogeneous uh, Pula, second Piola Kirchhoff, which is uh, uh, S tilde uh, H, and the, uh, the heterogeneous one, which we call the uh, S tilde. We will use two uh, examples, two potential examples. The first one is the simple one, Bonnet potential, uh, which is written theor theoretically uh, as two parts. Uh, is a correct and transversal uh, is a tropic and transversal part. Uh, here, the coefficients that we are uh, searching for are mu, uh, iso, lambda iso, uh, a trans, uh, b trans, c trans, and d trans. We will conduct several tests on our uh, representative elementary volume with uh, deformation bearing uh, minus 50 and 50 percent. The minus here is like incompressibility and the positive part is like the, te the tension. Uh, the model that we used for the matrix is uh, monet rivlin for the fiber is saint uh, and the material characteristic uh, we used for the matrix uh, Poisson, uh, Poisson coefficients that are like uh, 0.49. Fiber coefficient is uh, fi fiber Poisson coefficient is uh, 0.3, and the Young modulus is uh, 203 uh, 
203 for the contrast range, which we define as the factor between uh, the uh, Jung modulus of fiber and Jung modulus of matrix, is between uh, 1.1 1 .1 and uh, 2,500, which is very large. Uh, we do this test to study the best deformation level and contrast given the minimum local error. In the curves, uh, in the plots here, uh, we see that the error doesn't uh, surpass the 25%, which is a good thing. And with the test that we have from Bonnet uh, potentials, we can uh, define uh, the best uh, deformation bearing and the best uh, uh, contrast range for this uh, potential to have a minimum error of 15% will be like uh, doing compression between 31% and traction between uh, 39% and for the uh, contrast who is higher than 100%. The second potential uh, which was our purpose in the first place, is the Kalisk potential. The, the model of volumetric and idiochoric uh, uh, potential. Uh, this, uh, in this part, the one that we, uh, the coefficient that we are uh, trying to find are uh, AE, uh, BG, and CK, and DL. Uh, Using uh, the test that you are going to uh, to be doing in the for the potential uh, the Kalisk potential is in the small perturbation hypothesis, which means in the between minus uh, point 0.1 and uh, po uh, minus point 0.1 and uh, 0.1. Uh, we characterize for the matrix and uh, fiber. Uh, we use monet rivlin uh, model. And uh, we use uh, a coefficient, Poisson coefficient of uh, 0.3 for both of them. The results in the table we see here that the local error is so important when we are uh, at uh, like the contrast of 10, which is so so bad. No, um, which no, it's, uh, we are not content with this result. So in order to correct this. We propose two types of corrections. The first one is, uh, uh, but first, like, <coughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, in uh, uh, the explanation of this error, uh, of this large errors, it is explained by the fact that uh, there is a correct uh, coefficients which we use here, which is called. Uh, which are with underscores, uh, make uh, uh, um, a uniform compression of the material, which doesn't lead to uh, an, an anisotropic behavior, not uh, the last be uh, the behavior of our uh, uh, representative elementary volume, which we, which why we have presented. Two, co two correction proposals. The first one we will add uh, in, the, in the anisotropic part, uh, the first uh, order coefficients, which mean uh, C1 and D1, or the second correction is in, uh, instead of using the isochoric uh, invariants we will in the anisotropic uh, part, we will use the classical invariants, which uh, uh, normally compressible co uh, uh, invariants. Uh, doing the tests again, uh, the first uh, correction didn't work, but the second one did his charm. Uh, this is a comparison between the original version of Kalisk and the new version, which is, which is the second uh, corrective uh, propose, proposal. Uh, we conduct here the same test that we did on the first, uh, on the Bonnet potential. Uh, with a, an example of contracts uh, 2000 and we here we say from the original version the error, local error surpasses like 100 percent and with the new version the local error doesn't even surpass four percent 
So with the correction that we did on the model, it gives a great uh, result. In the end, we will now pass from the microscopic uh, part, which is on the VR, on the representative elementary volume, to the, la to the macroscopic uh, part, which is test on a complete fibred layer. Here we will conduct uh, tests on our, our layer. First of all, we will calculate the displacement error between an homogenized layer using uh, the identified uh, coefficients and the heterogene heterogeneous layer with the characteristic of the fiber and the matrix. Uh, we can also uh, compute a list of displacement gradient on representative volumes of the homogenized layer. Like we will, uh, our layer will, will like, how to say, slice. We will slice it in like blocks to have uh, our uh, representative volumes. And we will calculate the uh, displacement gradients for each block. And finally, using this list that we had, we will calculate the error between the second pure Kirchhoff homogenized tensor and the heterogeneous one. And finally, with all the results with ha we have with the global error and the uh, local error on the layer, we will build a new corrective method to re-estimate the macroscopic coefficient in order to minimize the error gap. Here, I am not going to present the macro correction uh, method, but this method is, uh, is an iterative method that all allows us to adapt uh, the homogenization law on the representative elementary volumes of the layer. We'll do a final test. Uh, for example, uh, we'll take uh, Bonnet potential. Uh, we will conduct a test using the same uh, characteristics that we use on the first place. And here I represent the final, er the final like errors that we have the, for the global error. Before the correction, we have 10 uh, percent. After the correction, using the weights, we'll have 4 percent, 1 percent. And for the average local error on, on uh, the volume elements, uh, uh, before correction we have 18 percent, uh, and after the correction we have until nine percent of uh, of, the, uh, of this error. Finally, our what we are seeing in the future. So we are beginning to uh, we are conducting now tests on a multi-layered sheet. And there is a new, uh, a new PhD doctor, uh, PhD student who is coming to uh, build a new uh, neural network in uh, order to simplify uh, the task for the user. Uh, we don't need to choose ourselves the potential. The neural, uh, the neural networks will, will choose it for us. And finally, we can uh, also verify the feasibility of our method on the viscoelasticity uh, characteristic materials. Thank you.